Hi, so now that we have looked at the formal definitions for DFA as well as NFA, we'll mostly stick to our intuition about these. So we'll uh, use NFAs by drawing them, we'll use DFAs by drawing them. And in this video, I want to talk about a few tricks that we can perform. So the first trick that I want to talk about is how to take a complement of a language from a DFA. And this is a fairly common trick. And there are a lot of tricks like these. I'm not going to be talking about each one of them. So let's quickly draw an NFA. So uh, let's quickly draw a DFA, sorry. And we'll draw a DFA for the language which uh, takes all binary numbers ending with zero. So I'll have my start state right here. This is my Q1. And on one, this needs to loop back to itself. And on 0, this needs to go to my final state. So I have my Q2 right here, which is my final state. This is a transition on 0. And uh, this is a transition on 1. So this is my 1 right here. And on 1, this Q2 will come back to Q1. And uh, on 0, this will just stay at Q2. This is my DFA for the language, which... Uh, ends in all zeros so uh, this is my language which ends with zero and I need to now draw a DFA for the complement of this language of course I could always draw an entirely new DFA but what we are going to see is a trick to modify this DFA itself to give me the complement of the language and I want you to take note here that the complement of the language with ends with zero is not uh, the language which is strings that end with one. It's actually strings that, that end with one union epsilon. The empty string is also part of my uh, complement language. So how do I uh, create my complement language from this DFA that's given right here? And the answer is actually very simple. I just need to flip my final states. So whatever is my final state will now be a non-final state. And whatever isn't my final state will become a final state uh, in my new DFA. So let's uh, make our complement DFA right here. So I have my start state, which is Q1, which will now also be a final state. And I'll have my q2 which will no longer be a final state now and let's go here on zero the arrows will remain exactly the same so this loops back to itself on a one uh, this comes back here on a one and this retains itself on a zero so first off let's uh, see if this accepts epsilon and of course it does because on no input i'll be at my start state which is q1 and which is my final state so that's no problem i am accepting epsilon right here so i am accepting epsilon and let's also just check a random string which ends with one does this dfa accept it so i'll see one one zero uh zero one let's say um so initially i'm in my start state after i consume this one right here i'm going to be in uh, my start state q1 itself when I consume this another one, I'll still be in Q1. Uh, when I come to this zero, I'll switch to Q2. So at this point, I'll switch to Q2. And when I encounter this zero, I consume this zero and just stay in Q2 again. And when I encounter this one right here, I come back from this arrow right here. I go back to Q1 and Q1 is a final state. So this string is being accepted. So this is... Uh, accepted in my DFA and that is uh, that is expected because uh, it does belong to the complement of this language right right here which is ends with zero the complement of this language is uh, ends with one union uh, epsilon so this is my complement language so that's trick number one all we have to do is to get a complement language, flip the final states. So my new final states are the states in my original DFA, which were not final states. And uh, in the original DFA, whatever 
was a final state now becomes a non final state so that's trick number 1 trick number 2 that i want to talk about is uh doing a union of two languages so let's say i have a dfa which accepts uh all strings ending with 0 let's say i have a q uh actually let's just call this q1 so i'll call this q1 uh this is my dfa which accepts uh all strings ending with 0 This is my Q2 right here. On zero, it stays here. On one, this loops to itself. Uh, this makes a transition on zero, and this comes back here on one. The exact DFA that we drew previously, and the second one that I have is uh, a DFA which accepts all strings which end with a one. Uh, sorry, here my Q2 needs to be a final state. So. Uh, for accepting ones all i have to do is uh let's let's just call this q3 and what i do is i just flip the arrows it'll be a one here and then i'll have my final state let's call it q4 and this will come back on a zero this will retain state on a one uh this one will retain state on a zero so this is uh ends with ends with zero and this one is ends with one so if i wanted to take a union of these two languages what do i get i have the language which contains strings that end with either zero or one uh that's almost all strings in the language remember it will not contain epsilon so how do i uh, make a dfa for the union of these two So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing which comes to my mind intuitively is to create an NFA and the way I would do that is I would have another state q0 and I make this my start state and I make epsilon transitions from q0 to q1 and I make an epsilon transition from q0 to q3 as well and the rest of the DFA uh actually remains the same. I have uh q2 here and i have q4 here and this will be a transition on 0 this is a transition on 1 i come back here on 0 i come back here on a 1 uh this one retain state on a 0 and this one retain state on a 1 so uh this part was actually remaining the exact same thing this part remains the same as uh this part right here and similarly for the bottom one as well i've actually missed a couple of self loops this needs a self loop on uh one and this one needs a self loop on zero so this is what comes to my mind intuitively and what we'll do is we'll take a look at a trick to actually just get a dfa directly remember this is an this is an nfa because this has epsilon moves so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can uh get the dfa directly so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take a combination of states so i'll have a state which is called q1 q3 i'll have a state which is called uh q 2 q3 i'll have another state which is called uh q1 q4 and i have another state which is called uh q2 q4 so this is basically me taking one state from the top dfa and another one from the bottom dfa right here so i took q1 from here i took q3 from here that gave me q1 q3 i took q2 from here and q3 from here that gave me q2 q3 and similarly for the other two states and what i do is uh because q1 and q3 were my start states in my dfa uh that i had in the uh previous page i just make this my start state for uh my new dfa and now uh from q1 q3 i take a look at what is the transition on zero so from q1 it goes to q3 and from uh sorry from q1 it goes to q2 from q3 it stays at q3 
So I I do have a state called Q2, Q3. I just make a transition there. So I transition here based on a zero. And next, let's look at uh, what is the transition from Q1 and Q3 on one. So Q1 on one stays at Q1, and Q3 on one goes to Q4. So on one from my Q1, Q3 state, I should be going to my Q1, Q4 state which is uh, this one right here. So I do a transition on one right here. So these are my transitions for Q1, Q3. Let's take a look at Q2, Q3 now. So on zero, Q2 stays at itself. Q3 also stays at itself. So my combined state Q2, Q3 will also just stay at itself right here. So this is my transition on zero and on one. Let's see what happens. So on one, my Q2 goes to Q1 and my Q3 goes to Q4. So from my Q2, Q3 combined state, I need to go to Q1, Q4, which is uh, this one right here again. So I go on one right here. And now let's take a look at Q1, Q4. Um, so I go here and I see on uh, Q1, on zero, I go to Q2. From Q4 on 0, I go to Q3. So from my combined state Q1, Q4, I'm going to go to Q2, Q3. So Q2, Q3 is this one right here. So on 0, this goes here. And let's see for 1. Uh, on, from Q1, I'm going on a 1 to Q1 itself. And from Q4, I'm again going to Q4 itself. So it just... Uh, my combined state Q1, Q4 also just stays at Q1, Q4 on a 1. So this just loops to itself on a 1. And now even though I did create this Q2, Q4 state, but since this is not reachable, I don't need to worry about it at all. So let's get rid of it. And now what I've got right here is my combined DFA for the union of the two languages. And we can uh verify this as well so let's take uh oh we need our final states as well we need to mark our final states so let's go and take a look at what were our final states here our final states were q2 and q4 so wherever i see q2 or q4 i need to make that a final state so this uh right here will be a final state and this right here will also be a final state so now let's take a look at any string. So let's say first we have uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. So what happens when we consume this 0? Initially we are at Q1, Q4. Sorry, we are at Q1, Q3. When we consume the 0, we go to Q2, Q3. When we consume the next 0, we stay at Q2, Q3. When we consume the 1, we go to Q1, Q4 right here. And when we consume the last one, we stay at Q1, Q4. So this string is being accepted, which is uh, expected because uh, we are basically accepting all strings other than epsilon. And what does happen if we just take epsilon as the string? Then we are stuck at this right here, Q1, Q3, which is not a final state. So epsilon is not going to be accepted. So this is a trick on how to create a union of two languages uh, using two DFA. We can directly get a DFA. But if this doesn't sound very intuitive to you, don't worry about it. You can always create the NFA that we created at the bottom here and then convert an NFA to a DFA. And as to how an NFA is converted to a DFA, we'll take a look at that exact thing in the next video. So I'll see you there.